Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for Florida Shines Virtual College Week. We apologize for the wait, but we're excited to have you here today. My name is Nashla Dewari, and I will be facilitating today's session, which is everything you need to know about getting the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. Um, before we begin, though, I do need to tell you a few housekeeping items. If you have questions today, we are going to be tracking those in the Q&A box. Uh, so drop your questions there. We will address them during the live Q&A and in a follow-up email. Additionally, closed captioning is provided uh, for this session, so click the link in the chat box. Uh, and we will be recording this session today. All of the recordings along with any materials shared in our presentations will be posted to our website, floridashines.org. Finally, we are live on Twitter, so feel free to share your comments and connect with us at FL Shine. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Pedro Hernandez. Pedro is currently our outreach representative for the Office of Student Financial Assistance here in the state of Florida. He has over 20 years of experience in financial aid, and his industry tenure started, um, believe it or not, as a college work-study student at Florida State University in the financial aid office. So what a great journey. Throughout his experience, he's had positions as a financial aid officer, a lender representative, a warrantor servicer, so lots of good experience related to this field. We're very excited to have you here today with us, Pedro, especially to learn about the Bright Future your scholarship. Thank you for joining us. The floor is yours. Thank you. It is my pleasure. And welcome, everyone. My name is Pedro Hernandez. I will be co representative today in with this presentation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Um, the first the first slide is going to cover our agenda. Our agenda is going to give first and foremost, we're going to cover is the bright teachers, the home streams, the initial eligibility requirements, the evaluation process and how you actually get that award, and finally, how you actually submit the Florida Financial Aid application for the FSAA. Now, the next slide is just going to be the Bright Teachers Home Screen. In regards to Bright Teachers, Bright Teachers is a program, merit based program administered by the state of Florida. It is close to almost $600 million here in the state of Florida. And how the very first thing is how do you apply? Well, you go to our home screen. Our home screen is at Florida Student Financial Aid Institute.org. And as you can see, this is the actual screenshot. You can actually log in. Or we have all the uh, all the state scholarships and grants listed in a row on the right hand side. And the third one down is going to be the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. We highly, highly recommend clicking on the Florida Bright Future Scholarship link, and it will transfer you to the actual the, all the specific, including a Florida handbook, which is a valuable, valuable tool. But it also has one page summary of all the scholarships. So we want to make sure that the very first thing that you know is you can write down this website. It is Florida Student Financial Aid SG. The next slide is once again, once you click on that link, the budget link, we highly, highly recommend all students go to Chapter 1, Initial Eligibility. This is an actual handbook. It's going to have you all of that information there available to you in a, in a quick three week notice. And if there are any changes whatsoever from the Department of Education, it will be updated here on our online handbook. So just always have it linked to your homepage to make sure what not only the criteria for this year's seniors are, but actually for next year's seniors as well. As I indicated on the bottom, the middle arrow, that is your one page, single page informational sheet on all the scholarship levels. There are three scholarship levels, the Florida Academic Scholar, the Florida Medallion, and the Gold Seal Vocational Scholarship. The Gold Seal Vocational Scholarship has two levels, the Gold Seal Vocational Scholar and the Scholarship. So all that information is listed once again on a page by page, on a single page, so you can have a quick access to it. We also have additional resources on the far far hand side. There's a little red arrow that has additional resources, which also cover any additional questions you might have in regards to the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. Now, the next slide is, and what we're going to proceed to is. 
what are some of the initial eligibility requirements? And those are going to be, as we can take, if you go on to the next slide, the general requirements are to receive a Florida Marshall Scholarship is you do have to be a Florida resident and a U.S. citizen or an eligible non-citizen. And that's always going to be determined by the school's admissions office or the registered office. You have to complete the Florida Financial Aid application no later than August 31st of your high school graduation. So in this case, if your high school senior this year, that means your high school graduate of the 1919-1920 school year, your high, the deadline is August 31st of 2020. But I always get asked the question, if you submit your application today, that requirement is met, we will still check for you as a high school graduate graduating in 2020 for until all the way up to high school graduation, we will still take all qualifying classes that you take, the GPA that you receive, and the community service or service hours that you do. You have until August 31st to submit this application, and you have to June 30th of 2020 to submit all qualified test groups. Now, in addition to that, you have to earn a standard high school diploma or its equivalent from a Florida high school or a private institution here in the state of Florida. Next slide. You also have to have not been found guilty or pleaded no low contract or to a felony charge when you are entering high school. When it comes to the Florida Mind Teacher Scholarship, if you it can only be accepted if you are enrolled in a degree or certificate program and an eligible Florida public, private institution here in the state of Florida, and you have five years to actually utilize this scholarship. There are certain caveats where we go over a little bit later, but if you're a traditional student, if you graduate in 2020, you have until 2025 to actually complete all your requirements, pending the fact that you re-enroll to complete the requirements every single year. And we're going to go through that process as well. The student has to be enrolled by at least six semester hours. They cannot be remedial hours or hours that are that are not credit bound. So they have to be at least six or at least half time of your actual enrollment period. Next slide. Now, once again, there are three levels of the Florida Black Future Scholarship. The Florida Academic Scholar, the Florida Medallion, the Gold Seal King, and the Gold Seal Vocational Scholarship are the last scholarship that's divided into two levels. But every student can only qualify for the award level when they graduate high school. Now, what are the requirements? This table is found on the student handbook, but it is a, it's found on page three of the handbook that we talked about earlier. But if you want to qualify, the traditional way to qualify for the Florida Academic and Florida Fanatic, there are five total requirements. You are listed four of them here. First one here, the class is taken. You have to take at least four math classes, four English classes, three special science, three social science, and two consecutive world languages. Within just those classes, those 16 credit hours, you're going to have to, in order to receive a Florida Academic Scholarship, you're going to need to obtain a 3.5 weighted GPA or higher just within those classes. Not your overall GPA, but within those classes. If you want to qualify for the Florida Medallion, you need a 3.0 GPA or higher weighted GPA in those 16 core classes. Now, the qualifying test scores for if you're a 1920 high school graduate, in order to qualify for the Florida Academic, you need a 29 ACT or a 1290 SAT. For the Florida Medallion, you need a 26 ACT or an 1170 SAT. Now, we at the Florida Department of Education, we super score your test. So if you take either the SAT or SAT, the, your best subcomponent scores, we super score them. We take each individual subcomponent score, as long as you meet the overall composite, you qualify for that stuff. In addition to that, you need to have your service hours or your community service hours completed by high school graduation. In order to qualify for the Florida Academic Summer, you need 100 community service hours documented and 
completed my high school graduation with your high school graduate counselor. For the Florida medallion, you're going to need at least 75 community service hours or service hours. Now, both the class and the GPA test scores are all going to be transmitted by your high school or your private institution directly to us. These are all the things you have to qualify. So always check with your high school medallion counselor. Now, in the, on the next slide, you're going to see that under Florida statute, your public high school, if you're in the 11th and 12th grade, they must, they must disclose your grade point GPA for Florida by teachers' purposes. So just make sure that those, your counselors are reporting your GPA to you, not only your own work in, but your bright teacher's GPA. Now, when it comes to GPA, on the next slide, you're going to see that the overall evaluation for bright teachers include unrounded weighted high school grade point averages calculated to two decimal places in those 16 preparatory credits. So that means the following courses are weighted 0.25 per semester or 0.50 for a year course in calculation of, the AP, of, of your GPA. So all your AP classes, your pre-IB, your IB, your pre-ACE, your ACE, your dual enrollment, and your honors classes are weighted and we take that weighting into consideration when we calculate your GPA. The next slide. When it comes to the college entrance exams, your SAT or ACT, it is you have to meet the requirement for you know, the Florida Academic or Florida Medellin by taking either or, not both, but just either or the SAT or ACT requirement. As, as we were as indicated earlier, taking tests are going to be taken all the way up to June 30th of your high school graduation year. In regards to students, they're going to be evaluated on the official test scores, and we highly, highly recommend when you take the, both the SAT or ACT, please list, once again, I'm going to repeat this because it's vitally important, please list that your test scores go to at least one of the state universities in the state of Florida. That means whether it's FSU, UF, UCF, all any of the 12 state universities, please list at least one of them, except Florida Polytechnic University. But any other test, any other test, have it at least sent to them, because that way we are assured that when you take those tests, those institutions are going to send a pure test depository and we'll be able to evaluate your test scores. Your test scores don't come directly from your transcript, they come directly from the actual test depository, which we'll receive directly from them. So just once again, I want to reiterate, when you take your FAT ACT test, make sure that you can list each state university to ensure that we receive those test scores. Next slide. When it comes to service hours, students must complete and turn in service hours during high school and by high school graduation. Once again, you have until high school graduation to turn in those hours. Every school district is different in what and how they determine the eligibility for community or service hours. Just make sure you check with your district and make sure you document it. So the students that you go out and do 200, 300 service hours, if they're not documented with your high school guidance counselor, they're not going to show up on our system and it's going to show you, gonna, our system is going to reflect that you do not meet with our teacher's criteria in terms of service hours because they're not documented. Next slide. There are other other ways to qualify for the Florida Black Scholarships. Now, students who earn a National Merit finalist and scholars, by obtaining that diploma, they don't have to submit qualifying test scores, but you still have to submit your service hours. Same thing for the National Hispanic Scholars, the H diplomas, or the IB diplomas. If you receive those diplomas, and once again, let me reemphasize, if you receive those diplomas in order to receive Florida, the, the, in order to qualify for the Florida Graduate Scholarship, you do not have to submit qualifying test scores. However, you do need to submit your service hours. However, if you're in the ICE diploma or program or the IB program, but you do not get a degree, you just go through the curriculum, then at that point, you do have to submit and earn qualifying either SAT or SAT test scores to receive the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. 
Okay, let me repeat that. If you earn either the IB or National Hispanic Scholars or the National Merit Finalist and Scholars, you do not need to submit qualified ACT or ACT test scores. However, if you are only in the ACE curriculum or the IB curriculum, you do need to submit those test scores. Now, that is how you qualify for either the Florida Academic or Florida Medallion Scholars or the Florida Vice for under the Florida Vice Scholarship. There are the Gold Seal King Scholars. It is another way to qualify. If you are going into a technical or vocational field and want to get your certificate program or your AS program, and then if you want to go on to your bachelor's. For this specific Park Futures Award, you would only need to earn five post-secondary credits, no industry certifications, which are typically for college credit. They don't have to be in the same field as long as you earn five post-secondary credits, no industry certifications, and you have to complete 30 service hours. For the team, the goal is you'll keep scholars. On the next slide, you can see that it is for career education. It is, it can actually go all the way up to clock out programs, but it is only for when it comes to the goal COK. Once you get those 60 hours, then you can actually get an additional 60 hours to a course that are better towards a bachelor's degree. So that is the difference between the goal COK and the regular goal COK that we're going to go over on the next slide. On the next slide, you're going to see that the goal of your vocational requirements are you need to have a 3.0 GPA in the non elective high school courses. You need to take at least three full credits in a single career and technical educational program. You must achieve a minimum of 3.5 unweighted GPA in those three full courses. And you need to achieve the required minimum test score on the SAT or ACT or the per exam and complete 30 service credit hours. Those on the next slide, you're going to see what those qualifying test scores are under the SAT, ACT, and per exam to qualify for the goal seal vocation scope. Now, the next one is the goal seal vocational scholars. The award may only be used at post secondary institutions that offer, once again, applied technology diplomas, technical degree educational, or career certificate programs. These are going to be your certificate programs, your very short programs, which could possibly be less than three years. Now, on the next slide, we're going to go over how we do, we, do we evaluate you once you actually submit all the information. And if you go to the next slide, is there are actually two evaluation periods. Early evaluation, which is your seventh semester or your mid-year point during your high school career, and the final evaluation once you actually graduate. Transcripts should be submitted within 30 days at the end of each semester. So after 30 days, we're going to see your early evaluation. evaluation. So that means by January 30th, we're going to see your early evaluation. By 30 days after your high school graduation, we should have your final evaluation completed. Now, early evaluation is a good coursework because if you complete all of your coursework, meet all the requirements by your seventh by the seventh semester, that means that we have all that information. And if you qualify and meet all the requirements for the Florida Academic, Florida Medallion, Gold Seal, Gold Seal Team Scholarship, during that last semester, if you drop Below the requirements, you will not lose your actual eligibility for those degrees. Then, during our evaluation, we're going to take all your service hours earned through January 31st. We're going to evaluate you based on test scores, take it all the way up through January 31st as well. On the next slide, during final evaluation, this is where we're going to look at all your required coursework all the way through high school graduation. We're going to look at your service hours to complete through high school graduation. We're going to look at all your test scores that are taken all the way up to June 30th, even though it is past high school graduation. And we're going to look at your actual graduation date associated with earning a standard diploma. Next slide. Now, 
Benefit by the notifications. Upon creation of a student account, students will receive a user ID and password. This is when you actually, starting October 1st, you can fill out the Florida Financial Aid application. And once you actually submit an actual student account, you will get your user ID and password. Then also, that's us, the Office of Student Financial Assistance, will post your eligibility or ineligible determination to your student online accounts. So you're going to be able to log in and see exactly where you are in terms of qualifying for the level of the budget scholarship based on the criteria that you have. And that's as soon as you submit that application starting on October 1st of 2019. So if students have already submitted your Florida Financial Aid application, you can log into your account and see all of the actual courses that you're taking, your GPA, your community service hours, and the test scores that we have on your behalf. Once again, you have until high school graduation to submit qualifying GPA, classes taken, and community service hours. After June 30th, we'll qualify test scores and August 31st for your online application. However, if you are a student who was awarded an IBR and H diplomas, your notifications of eligibility will be determined in early fall after the list of IV and H diploma recipients have been received by our office. Even though those students have some of their actual application and they have submitted high school, if you are a recipient of an IV diploma or an H diploma, you're going to be receiving that a little bit later in the fall. So just be aware that if you are enrolling in summer school and you're an IV recipient or an H diploma recipient, your notification is going to come a little bit later than the actual enrollment in sometimes of summer school. So just be aware of that. We are aware of that. Notify your post-secondary institution of the eligibility of yourself as a student receiving an IB diploma that could possibly qualify you for the Florida Academic Scholarship. Next slide. Now, when it comes to actual award amounts, if a student is awarded the Florida Academic Scholar, the student will receive the equivalent of covering 100% of the tuition and applicable fees at a state college or state university, plus a $300 educational voucher for both fall and spring semesters. If you are a Florida Medallion recipient, you're going to see, receive the equivalent of 75% of tuition and applicable fees at a state college or state university. And if you're enrolling at a non-public institution, you will receive the comparable amount as noted in the private award chart accessible through the Bright Future Student Handbook, which is on chapter two of the handbook on page four. So for example, if you were to go and enroll at the University of Central Florida and you are a Florida academic student, you would cover 100% of your tuition and fees. However, if you were to enroll at Rollins College in the Orlando area, which is a private institution, you will receive the dollar equivalent amount of the Florida Academic Scholar, and that can once again, once again can on the Bright Future Student Handbook, Chapter 2, page 4. Next slide. For Gold Seal and Gold Seal Vocational Awards, we have given you the actual presentation with the actual link that you can actually link, and it will tell you exactly how much money per credit hour, or once you graduate it, how much the per credit hour is going to pay when it goes, um, when it goes into credit-based credit hour tuition. Once again, the Gold Seal and Gold Seal K, we'll be giving you an actual link, and it will get, guide you once again to that award chart and tell, telling you exactly what it's going to pay. The next slide is we're going to go over quickly and review the Florida Financial Aid application, or the FSAA. This application, once again, for high school seniors, it opens up on October 1st of 2019. The closing date or the deadline is August 31st of 2020. Students must complete it no later than August 31st after their high school graduation. And once again, students must complete the Florida Financial Aid application no later than April 1st before graduation for, and this is important, even though you have until August 31st to complete it for work futures, if you would like to be considered for the Jose Martinez Scholarship Grant, the Rosewood Family Scholarship, 
the scholarship for children and spouses of deceased or disabled veterans, or the Florida Farm Workers Student Scholarship, that deadline is April 1st. So just want to make sure that all students are aware that even though this application opens on October 1st and thereafter, you can submit this application. You have until August 31st of 2020, but you have until April 1st if you want to be considered for the Jose Marti Rosewood Scholarship for Children and Sponsors of Disease of Disabled Veterans or the Florida Farm Worker Student Scholarship. Now, the application is a two step process. Once you log into the actual website, you're going to create first and foremost an account, and then you're going to actually complete the Florida Financial Aid application. The next slide is the actual screenshot of Florida Student Financial Aid SG.org. This is our website, as you can see on the middle of the page, under first time applicant. You have a link to create an account. Once you create that account, it's going to send you automatically into the application. If you go to the next slide, this is how the actual screenshot of creating the account. It's going to ask you general demographic information. We ask all students to make sure that you are using either your correct social security number or your student ID number, and you're using your actual will first name and last name as it appears on your birth certificate. So we can match up both your transcript to your Florida Financial Aid application with relatively ease and to absolutely verify that it is indeed yourself that you applied for the Florida Financial Aid application and it matches directly to the transcript that your school is sent. Next slide is, if it's a twin profile, we will actually grant you that. If, once you actually submit the profile, once again, you're going to get your user ID and password. Please locate that because that is how you as a student can get access back to our system so you can check your eligibility. Once again, this is a close-up version of, on the next line, of your user ID and password. Then, once you go past that, you're going to go through the background and every other criteria for the rest of the actual scholarships. In totality, you're applying to approximately 20 plus scholarships and grants. Those are just specific information for these scholarships. But once you get through the entire application, you'll be considered or you'll be evaluated for all 20 plus state scholarships and grants offered by our office. Once again, you're going to answer first and foremost demographic information. Make sure that you read through everything carefully. Submit the information to the drop down box. Do the academic background. Make sure that you list your high school and the school that you want to go to. Vitally important because your schools, your post-secondary institutions are going to receive this information and they're going to evaluate you on that information. So make sure that you list your primary post-secondary institution and four other institutions. You're going to have a list of total of five institutions. Make sure that if you have your first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, make sure that they're all listed there. So you there all the all this information can go to those post secondary institutions. Next slide. Once again, it's gonna go through all the scholarships to see if you are eligible for those scholarships. It's gonna go through the, the Jose Marti, which is on the next slide. It's also gonna go through the Rosewood Family Scholarship, the two sections. And once you go through those four scholarships, it's gonna evaluate you for all twenty six other state scholarships and once you hit the Submit Acknowledgement page, click Submit once, and on the next slide, you're going to see how you have a successful submission. You're going to hit OK, and you'll be able to actually, at that point, know that your actual Florida Financial Aid application has been submitted. Now, it, on the next slide, once you hit the OK, you're going to see the results, and the results are going to show you if you qualify for either the Florida Academic, Florida Medallion, or any of the other 26 state scholarships and grants. They're going to be listed on this page, and just make sure that when you cross your post-secondary institution processes your financial aid, all those state scholarships and grants are also on your award notification. Here, once again, important information. Our website is Florida. On the next slide is Florida Student Financial Aid SG.org. If you have any questions or concerns in regards to a specific test for you can send a class what, where you are in terms of qualifying for a scholarship. You can contact our 800 
toll-free line, which is 888-827-2004. Or you can email us at also at fldoe.org. Or the FASTA web links are for the counselors. They can actually upload that information at those websites for you as a student. That is how the entire financial aid process works when it comes to applying for the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. At this time, I would open it up for questions. And uh, also, if you would ask me yeah, ask any questions that they have, because yes. I'm unable to see the screen at this time. Absolutely, and we have lots of questions coming in. Uh, Pedro, if you know, this is a very important topic for students looking at post-secondary options. So I want to thank you for sharing such a wealth of resources and remind the audience this was a lot of information shared, but we're going to have the recorded session along with this PowerPoint presentation available to you on floridashines.org. So we'll go ahead and jump into questions, Pedro, if you don't mind, and we'll try to tackle as many as Absolutely. possible. Uh, some of these uh, are re just reiterating what you've said, uh, but we've grouped the first few questions related to the application process. This is very important. So questions related to, one, is the FAFSA the same thing as the FFAA, the Florida Financial Aid Application? Is there a difference, uh, and how does that work? Yes, okay. No, there are two separate applications. The FAFSA or the that's a fast one. It's an acronym for the free application for federal student aid. That is how the U.S. Department of Education evaluates the economic situation of the family, and then it provides an actual institution the ability to compose a financial aid package based on numerous things, financial need and multiple other things. However, the application that we went over today is the Florida Financial Aid Application or the F-A-A, there are two applications by the student sending out the both applications, the student will be evaluated for federal funds, state funds, and institutional funds. Okay. However, when it comes to the both applications, they are, they're not mandated, but if the student absolutely wants to receive the Florida Board Future Scholarship, the Florida Financial Aid Application is mandated. Once again, let me repeat that again. The Florida Financial Aid Application is mandated. It is a requirement to receive the Florida Black Scholarship. The FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, is not a requirement, but it is available for all students and parents to be evaluated, once again, federal funds, state funds, and institutional funds. That's absolutely right, and so get the most out of um, the money that's available and apply for both. I want to remind the audience that if you want to learn about the FAFSA specifically, we have a session tomorrow about step-by-step -step guide on how to complete the FAFSA, everything you need um, to complete the form and fill it out, and that is tomorrow at 5 o'clock East, East, Eastern time, so join us for that session uh, if you'd like to join us at virtualcollegeweek.org and register a little bit more about that process. Pedro, as part of the Florida Financial Aid application, is the FLEID uh, from their student ID number? That is correct. If your school identifies you as a student with an FLEID number, you can enter that number on the application itself, on the Florida Financial Aid application. We are still going to match that to your transcript that your school sends. If your school sends the transcript with your Florida ID identification number, we'll match that up and we're going to evaluate you based on that. But we always highly suggest if the student, if it is possible, submit it both with the with, uh, Social Security number and the FSA ID number. Absolutely. Always good to check with your school counselor if you're able to make sure. Um, Pedro, related to timing, the next few questions. Um, in general, when is a good time to apply for the scholarship during high school? Uh, and then when it comes to uh, specifically IB or A students, you mentioned something about early fall notification. Um, is that before the fall begins? That is correct. And then let me go over a quick review. When it comes to financial aid, just briefly, financial aid 
is any and all money that comes from the four major sources. And there are four major sources. First and foremost, the federal government is the first source, the biggest source. Second, in the state of Florida, the $100 million that we administer. Third is the colleges and institutions with their institutional funds and finding private scholarships. When it comes to students, if they select both the FAFSA, the FASA, and the SFAA, those two applications, students will be evaluated from federal funds, state funds, and institutional funds. And when it comes to private scholarships, it's up to the students to apply to each individual private scholarships to apply for those. Now, students can start applying to those private scholarships as early as their junior year. But during their senior year, that's when students are if they would like to be evaluated, submit both the FAFSA and the Florida Financial Aid application to be evaluated for financial aid for the following year. Now, if a student, and this is vitally important, if a student is going to be an IV diploma recipient or an H diploma recipient, even though they graduate and the school sends us their transcript, we will not receive the actual notification from the IV diploma folks or the H diploma folks until later after high school graduation. It sometimes can cause a little delay if the student is going to be enrolling in immediately upon high school graduation at a post-secondary institution because there, there is some funding available for both the Florida Academic and the Florida Medallion. If the student is qualifying through the IB diploma or an H diploma, we might not have that on our system as of yet. So notify the post-secondary institution that we at the Florida Department of Education, Office of Student Financial Assistance, are still looking to receive that file from those individual entities. Once we receive the file that certifies that the student did, in re did indeed receive a diploma from the IV or H program, then we'll post it and we'll notify the post secondary institutions that yes, indeed, the student is either eligible for the Florida Academic or the Florida Medallion These are some really important information about eligibility. There are also a few questions about um, parents and income and um, whether or not um, high school student parents' income affects the eligibility or um, does the Bright Future Scholarship give you a set amount based on the awards that you cover? And uh, the third part, if you qualify for Florida prepay, for instance, or if you have Florida prepaid, can you also qualify for Bright Future? So a three-part <laughs> section, I'm happy to break it up. I'll, I'll cover them all. When it comes to the Florida Bright Future Scholarship, the Florida Bright Future Scholarship is a merit-based scholarship. So that scholarship does not consideration any income level from any of the parents or the students. If the student earns that scholarship, they will receive that scholarship. However, when it comes to the, the second level, there is no income level for it because it is a merit-based scholarship. Now, when a student is enrolled in college, university, or technical center, they will receive an award package that's based on all the awards that they have been evaluated for. When it comes to bright futures, it does student if they are enrolled in a Florida prepaid program or any other state scholarship or any other state aid. Because the Florida Bright Future Scholarship is a merit-based scholarship, they earn that scholarship, they will always receive that scholarship, and it is going to pay on a per credit hour basis depending on how many hours the student is enrolled. So if the student is enrolled in 12 credit hours, which is a full-time or 50 credit hours, those credit hours times the Credit dollar amount plus the $300 educational voucher for Bond Spring. That's how much is going to be awarded to Florida academic students. A Florida Madonna student, depending if they're enrolled for 10, 12, 15, 18 hours, that's how much 75% of those hours are going to be paid for by the Florida Department of Education on the student's behalf. All right, thank you, Pedro. And then I'll jump in to maybe the last section of questions, which have to do, again, with eligibility, but test scores uh, and tests in general. And so lots of questions related to a few parts is one of them, 
or some of them are, do students need to submit both ACT and SAT scores? Uh, and then who submits them? Are they usually, should they trust that those scores are going to be on their transcript or should they take additional steps to make sure those scores get to you? Uh, and then in related to that, which set of scores uh, apply in terms of eligibility, meaning 2020 grads, which set of scores should they be following for those tests? Okay, for the, first and foremost, when it comes to test scores, the test scores are set every year with every legislative session they are set. So this year's test scores for high school students graduating in June, May, May or June of 2020, they're gonna have to qualify for the Florida Academics they can take either the SAT or ACT. It's either or, it's not both, they can take either or. So in order to qualify for the Florida academic, a student needs to have a composite score of a 29 SAT, I mean ACT, or a 1290 SAT. Now, you can see the those. For the Florida Medana, it's 1170 or a 26 ACT, 1170. SAT or a 26 ACT. Now, when the student takes either test, either the SAT or ACT, starting in their, it could be as early as their sophomore, junior, senior year, however many times they take either of those tests, either the SAT or ACT, we are going to take their best sub component scores, along with any overall composite, they're going to qualify for that level of scholarship. Now, in addition to that, the student has all the way up to June 30th of their high school senior year to actually submit test scores, even though that's after high school graduation. Okay, great. And we'll stay on the topic of uh, uh, scores, Pedro, only because there are several questions related to the difference between super scoring and another term you use. Would you mind um, providing clarification on that? Absolutely. So once again, if the student takes, for example, the SAT three times, we are going to take their best subcomponent score from the math, from the English portion of each of those test scores, as long as the student meets, if the student has a 1290 to qualify for the Florida Academic Scholarship and meets all the other requirements, we're going to evaluate him and award him the Florida Academic Scholarship. If the student at least 1170, but not a 1290, then the student is going to be evaluated and awarded at the Florida Medina level. Now, if the student then takes the SAT and they score based on that, as long as the student meets for the Florida Bar teachers the entire amount of that, of that award, that's what they're going to qualify for. So once again, if we go back to the, if you, and that's what we highly, highly recommend all students to go and download and print the student handbook on page three, it's gonna tell them these are your four requirements that you need to make in order to qualify for either the Florida Academic or the Florida Medallion Scholarship in addition to the online application. All right, Pedro, thank you very much. We, I have to say we still have questions for our audience, if your question was not answered today, we are going to pass those on to Pedro, if you don't mind, and um, get back to you. Absolutely. Perfect. Let's get back to you via email. Uh, if you did not get a chance to submit your question, you can follow up with us at help at flvc.org, or you can contact us on our page at floridashines.org, virtualcollegeweek.org. Either way, you can get a hold of us and we'll be happy to um, connect you with Pedro or answer your questions about Bright Futures. But we are going to wrap it up and thank you, Pedro, for uh, sharing, again, such a wealth of information for our audience. We appreciate you attending today. I, I want to invite you to visit uh, other sessions and other topics at virtualcollegeweek.org. We appreciate your participation. We look forward to seeing you in the next couple of days of events uh, and certainly next year during our annual Virtual College Week. Thank you.